So you might have very high CTRs, like for example, in fake ads, but uh, that doesn't mean necessarily higher revenue or higher LTV, right? So in the end, uh, there are different or too many conversion rates from impression to click in this case, or from clicks to installs, installs to in-app actions and so on and so forth, that uh, you need to find the sweet spot between all of them to actually have a better impact or a, a good impact on the revenue or LTV or whatever metric you're keen on, right? What are the 15 worst, most awful, incredibly horrific mistakes you can make in mobile user acquisition? Hello and welcome to Broad Masterminds. My name is John Goods here. I saw something really interesting on LinkedIn a couple of weeks ago. Someone posted and said they managed 26 billion euros in ad spend to scale apps over the past 12 months. And they learned 15 of the worst performance killing mistakes. Well, after that, I had no choice. I had to invite them onto Growth Masterminds and discuss all this stuff. Here with us is the author of that LinkedIn post. His name is Pablo Gonzalez. He's a performance marketing director for Admiral Media. He's worked in performance and digital marketing for over a decade for Mercado Libre, Banco Galicia, and multiple other brands. Welcome, Pablo. Thank you very much, John. It's a pleasure to be here, to be honest. Thanks for the invite. I'm just happy that you responded to some crazy dude on LinkedIn who said, hey, I like your post. Let's talk about it on a podcast. And you did. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's how the awesome. industry works, I guess, right? <laughs> that's how the industry works. You get connected, you take advantage. There you go. Uh, let's jump right in. I mean, you manage a lot of spend. Um, you, you, you promote a lot of apps. You've learned a lot of stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. So, um, um, within the agency, we mostly manage, um, app clients and, um, in the past 12 months, we managed 26 million euros, as you correctly said. And, um, yeah, I have seen so many times, um, a few basic mistakes for marketers that definitely we all should avoid. Awesome. So we're going to run through all 15. We'll have to be brief. We don't want to do two hours of conversation here. Nobody will listen to all of that. I'll just li list them off your 15 key learnings or key mistakes, things not to do. Um, and then give us a little bit of color around each one of them, a little bit of insight. Your first one is not diversifying across multiple ad platforms. Yeah. So, um, it also relates to um, diversifying your portfolio uh, very close to the investment, right? Or, um, money investing. But um, basically, uh, the correlation with paid actions or marketing in general is basically if you are all in into one bucket, let's say if you are investing everything into Google Ads, TikTok, Officer Chats, whatever channel it is, then um, first of all, you have nothing to compare it with. And secondly, if that bucket starts getting holes, then you will lose everything, right? And so by diversifying, you you can actually achieve better performance and, and higher revenues overall and not rely only on a single ad. Then. It makes a ton of sense. I remember doing some research on this way back when I think I was consulting for Tune at the time and the best mobile marketers, the ones who are achieving the most success, were using at that time between eight and 15 different platforms. I'm sure the number's gone way up for some and for others, it's lower, depends on your budgets and your scale yeah. and what you're doing but diversification doesn't matter. Number two is reducing iOS spend because of scan tracking limitations. Why is that a key error? Well, uh, since um, ATT was introduced um, almost two years and a half ago, um, I have seen so many times advertisers and marketers actually stopping or reducing iOS spend and not related to app search ads, of course, because it wasn't affected by scan tracking limitations. But um, so, iOS is usually the best um, performing um, operative system, right? Um, and I think usually because it's not 100% the case, but it's um, usually the, 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 the situation that we have seen for our clients. And if you make a decision to reduce the spend there, then it means that you're missing big, big opportunities, right? Or have also seen some advertisers switching, I don't know, Meta or Google or TikTok um, budget to Apple Search Chats. And Apple Search Chats it has its own um, a limitation because it's super related to search volumes, which similar to Google search for web campaigns or mm -hmm. even app campaigns as well. Um, so definitely a wrong decision as well. <laughs> 
I think that's a great insight because, you know, just because the marketing measurement changed and obviously degraded didn't mean the people were gone, didn't mean they weren't buying iPhones, didn't mean that they weren't installing apps on iOS, didn't mean they weren't paying for things in apps. And so taking away your marketing didn't make any sense. That's a great point about Apple search ads, because if you're something that is brand new and maybe there isn't a search volume for you. The, the, you've got a little bit of a challenge there, right? So that makes a ton of sense. Your third one, uh, third mistake, failing to account for campaigns, not meeting skin minimum thresholds. Talk about that. Yeah, also related to the previous one. So because you were not having um, enough conversions attributed or you weren't uh, getting revenue reported in your scan campaigns. Um, so you need to deep dive on why you're not getting them, basically, because there is a way, of course, to get them if you reach the minimum install thresholds that um, Apple's has. Um, so you need to actually take care of your, comp your campaigns, check the numbers, analyze what are the number of installs you're getting on a daily basis, and then, of course, re rework or rethink the, um, the conversion value mapping strategy that you have applied. Mm -hmm. The good news is it's getting better in Scan4. I know it's taking a while for Scan4 to get here, but the good yes. news is that... <laughs> Crowd anonymity is a little more forgiving than privacy thresholds, so you're going to have fewer null values. That's a great thing. Number four, no, mistake number four, not consistently testing creatives, copy, and calls to action. Talk about that. Yeah, and also I'm always in favor of experimenting. By experimenting, you can actually have something, your current, your current uh, performance you're able to go to compare your current performance with something, right? So um, I said creatives, copy, CTAs, but it also applies to different features like um, DCO, dynamic trade optimization in, in Meta or in um, TikTok as well. It could be to audience targeting, lookalikes versus growth versus interest, for instance. Um, so by testing, you can actually identify which opportunities you, will, you can find out there. It's super interesting and I, I get it, right? Because testing eats some budget, um, but it also makes budget spend more efficient, right? So there's got to be that balance between I've got a great creative and a great call to action here and it's getting great results and always trying to beat your best, uh, which is hard to do. There's some people who have <laughs> like this creative that is amazing and they can't beat it for half a year or a year, but eventually the world changes or your ads change or your, 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 your intended users, audience, uh, customers change and, and something will beat it. Number five is related. So it's, it's not just about testing, but number five is not having a creative testing approach. Talk about why that's important to have a creative testing approach. Yeah, super related to the previous one. And, and from my perspective, this is among the top three, I would say. Um, by the way, I, I, I didn't sort them out um, from highest priority to lowest priority because um, it depends on, on also on, on where you want to focus your efforts. But um, to properly test something, you need to have a plan, right? And, and that's what I mean by creative testing approach. And it will also apply for audience testing, copy test testing, CTA, or whatever thing that you're uh, testing out there. If you don't have a plan, um, then you don't know um, how to react um, if the data is not coming, or maybe the data is not coming, or you don't have enough data because the test approach was uh, completely wrong, right? Or maybe you didn't have any. So um, by identifying the different steps in the plan, on the plan, then um, you would be able to come up with uh, the results afterwards, analyze them and uh, reiterate for the next tests. That makes so much sense because if you're kind of ad hoc about testing and just kind of change your methodology from time to time, you don't even have a defined methodology, you may not even be able to compare test versus test and you're, you're, you're just kind of shooting in the dark a little bit. Makes sense. Mistake number six, not aligning ad messaging with the app's core value proposition. I guess you're not a fan of fake ads. <laughs> not really, to be honest. I mean, I also... Um... I always rely on data, right? Um, and yes, you might have very high CTRs, like for example, in fake ads, but uh, that doesn't mean necessarily higher revenue or higher LTV, right? So in the end, uh, there are different or too many conversion rates from impression to click in this case, or from clicks to installs, installs to in-app actions and so on and so forth, that uh, you need to find the sweet spot between all of them to actually have a better impact or a, a good impact on the revenue or LTV or whatever metric you're keen on, right? 
um, if there is a mismatch between what the user sees in the ad, so this will create some expectations, right? So if there is a mismatch between what expect and what they see after clicking on the ad, which is basically what they will see in the app store, then the, the conversion rate from clicks to install will, will drop heavily. And if the, um, if the CTRs are not high enough to balance that out, then you're losing actually um, a revenue. That is the uh, the old instant delete, huh? <laughs> I hope exactly. the app, it is not what I expected. <laughs> Boom, one, no mercy, out. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, mistake number seven: over boosting underperforming campaigns. What's going on here? Are people just falling in love with something and saying it will work? It will work. Yeah, the, this one and the, the next one are somehow related. Um, it also applies for scan related campaigns, right? Because you don't have too much visibility on what's going on because again, you might not be reaching the initial threshold or the conversion volume mapping is not the best one or because of whatever reasons. You might think that the campaign is or might be working, but in the end, it's not the case, right? So um, you need to understand and analyze the data that you have. And also, it could also apply for Android campaigns where the tracking is pretty much in place as, as it used to be before. Um, we don't know how it will change with uh, Privacy Sandbox next year. But um, it could also be that you are not taking a look at the right picture, right? Because there are some uh, self-attributed networks that might be over-reporting revenue or installs or um, different enough actions. And if you don't compare this with any other um, data source, let's such as an MMP or your own internal tracking system and reporting system, then you might also think that the campaign is actually um, working very good. And in the end, it might not, right? Staying on top of your data. Cool. Mistake number eight, you mentioned it's very related. Keeping poor performing ad creatives running, hoping they'll turn around soon. What's going on there? I personally like to rely or buy, base my decisions on data. So if you don't actually change anything, then data is not likely to won't be likely to be improved just because of magic, right? So if a creative is not working and nothing changes, then that creative won't work in the future either, right? So it's better to take fast decisions, like iterate based on the data that you have. Again, and iterate by iterate, I mean change creatives or change landing page or whatever, but then you need to change something or maybe the audience that's seeing the ad, right? But you need to change something. Mm -hmm. um, um, for it to improve, otherwise, impossible. Makes sense. Um, yeah, magic rarely happens. Uh, so brutal. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like to hope maybe I wouldn't make a good performance marketing manager. A mistake number ten. Only. Oh, actually, I'm going ahead. Of, I'm going to, getting ahead of myself. Mistake number nine: ignoring ad placement data and other breakdowns. That is a super interesting one. Not all ads are the same. Not all placements are the same. Talk about that. Yes. Um, so for example, UGC content, we know it's usually delivered in a vertical format. Um, um, so nine by 16 ratio for the technical uh, ones. Um, but that probably won't work on the feed, right? Because feeds usually use four by five or square one by one. Right, so definitely to understand how the data is performing on different breakdowns, placement, gender, age, or, and, and um, almost or any other breakdown you might have available available in the ad network. But it's also true, and I have also a LinkedIn post about it that, um, for example, running scan campaigns, um, we have been we launched three or four ad sets. Let's say one we were targeting feeds, on the other one we were targeting stories, and on the other one we were targeting the random um, placements in Meta. And we got attributed installs and enough conversions for placement we were not targeting, right? So it, it wasn't getting any impression, but because of Meta's own attribution modeling based on scan, which is we doesn't report at level data, sorry, at or at level data, they were assuming that or attributing installs and enough events to a placement that wasn't getting any impressions. So you also need to be careful about that. <laughs> you just told me you don't believe in magic. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> It is what it is you to understand um, how the data is built. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, your next one's kind of related to that, actually. It's a great segue. Mistake number 10, only looking at in-platform reporting. Hint, your MMP can be a treasure. 
Yeah, I kind of uh, covered that um, with a self-attributed um, comment I did before. Um, personally, I like to contrast trends and specific data from different sources. So it could be that um, the own ad networks and the MEP, which um, could be singular or any other, but um, definitely you need to understand if the trend that you're seeing in one data source is actually following the trend that you see in a different, in another one. If not, then you need to deep dive mm -hmm. and understand why there's such discrepancy. It's kind of related to what Singular calls hybrid attribution as well. It's just look at all the different data sets because you'll see different things in them and different things will be actionable. It makes a ton of sense. Absolutely love it. Mistake number 11, ignoring retention and churn rates. In other words, mm -hmm. I just get the user. You do something with. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So there needs to be a correlation between the product team and the marketing team. Because otherwise you will be paying for users who are actually um, um, being retained for one day or they are not converting into, I mean, we have seen it too many times that users start the trial for subscription-based apps and after the trial ends or even before the trial ends, seven days, three days or whatever, then the users cancel the trial and they don't convert into subscription, right? Um, so and they are not coming back to the app because they need to pay um, 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 to, to use the app further. So. Uh, the turn rate in those cases will be high and the retention rate will be low, right? So you you don't need to take a look only at, okay, we have a um, cost for acquiring user or CAC goal of 15, 20 or whatever. So we are below that. Everything is fine. No, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Mistake number 12, ignoring app uninstalls as a feedback metric. Talk about that. You mentioned it um, uh, when we were covering uh, a previous bullet point. Um, if a user uninstalls the app right after, um, because I know fake ads, they have been acquired by a fake ad or whatever, um, then if the uninstall rates are high, it's something is wrong, right? So, um, it's also related to the churn rate, but it's very early in the, um, in the funnel. So hundred percent, you also need to take a look at, um, how many users are uninstalling the app and when they're doing so when in the, in the user funnel, user acquisition funnel. That's so critical. When are they? Because if it's instant, then it's probably some problem with targeting or messaging or something like that, or 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 your onboarding experience. If it happens at a at a price point, you know, a subscription sign on point, that's understandable. But maybe there's things you can work around that. If it happens after a new app update, ouch! You might have some loyal loyal users, and you change something significant in your game, and all of a sudden the mechanic doesn't work for them, and it's not fun anymore, or they think it's not worth it. Knowing why they uninstalled, absolutely critical. Mistake number 13, not being aware of the synergies between user acquisition and app store optimization. Talk about that. Yeah, I will also link it with the next one, which is underestimating the power of ASO, ASO number 14 that will be covering both together. So definitely if um, you need to understand which are the search terms that are bringing organic traffic. For example, you might be ranking um, on the top five for specific search terms. So you need to understand if it's actually worth it to um, actually spend money uh, on user acquisition or, or Apple search chats or even in Google, or Google search or sorry, or, or um, Google ad campaigns for specific search terms, right? Because um, if it doesn't bring any incremental installs or revenue, then it doesn't really make sense to spend money on those search terms that you are covering through ASO or organically, right? Um, mm -hmm. And vice versa. So if you're not ranking on specific search terms that you would like to, the easiest way to do that or the quickest way to do that is actually to target those terms through Apple search ads, for instance, right? Um, rather than to rework the full ASO strategy. It could be more expensive in the long run, but definitely it's a very quick um, and immediate change that you could um, do to get more uh, an incremental revenue. And there's kind of, there's times when if you can align your UA and your ASO, then you can boost your impact, you know, one plus one equals three in some cases, right? Because you're ranking better and hmm. so your click through is better and other things like that are, are, are happening. So there's a lot to be learned there. So that was number 13 and number 14. Mistake number 15 is not analyzing user ratings and feedback regularly. Super interesting. Chat about that one. Yeah, I have a very... Funny, sad story, I would say, um, because it impacted one of our clients negatively. 
And um, basically, Google um, Play Store decided to remove 50% or even more of the reviews that, um, or ratings that um, our client was having. It was a dating app. And um, of course, those ones were um, five star, four star reviews, so the best ones. And randomly, they decided, okay, these are fake uh, reviews, so we will be removing all of them. And then the rating went down heavily. And this 100% impacted the, the conversion rate from click to install. Because if users get to an App Store page or um, a Play Store page where the only thing they see is are, are users complaining about the app and nothing is good, then they are not likely to install it, right? So first of all, um, ratings and reviews matter, and you need to feedback them regularly. I mean, uh, providing a, a good answer, like um, as a mediator, so to say, or explain why um, the experience that they had was bad or why um, something happened to them. So other users might see, okay, this might not happen to me, right? And so, and, and I know that there's someone or a real person behind this screen. So that, that definitely will help. That is uh, a nightmare scenario. Your overnight, your ratings crater from maybe a 4.3 to a 2.1 or something like mm -hmm. that. That's massive and huge. That's, <laughs> that'll keep people up at night. You know, it's funny. We finished the 15 mistakes here, but as I look over them, it reminds me how challenging a job it is to grow mobile apps because it's not like you can focus on one thing. You've got to diversify your spend. You've got to keep spending even when there's measurement limitations because of scan or privacy sandbox or other things like that. You have to keep testing. You have to have a framework for that. You've got to align your messaging <clears throat> with your core proposition. You've got to look at your creatives, your ad placements, so many ad sources of data, different reporting places, MMP in platform. And then, of course, what's happening in app in terms of your user experience and churn and other retention, all that stuff. It's a hard job. It is, but it's also rewarding when, when, you, when you see results coming through. <laughs> and you see, well, I mean, work for an agency, so um, it's also rewarding when you see clients um, are happy and they're uh, uh, recommending us and the work mouths get spread out there. It's always interesting to chat to different people because you chat to people who work for one company, one brand, one app or a portfolio of apps, and they have a certain set of challenges, right? They can go super deep. And they spend a long time over 12, 18, 36 months, whatever, with that app versus somebody with an agency. And you probably dip your toes in five, six, 10, 15 different apps at any given, you know, two week span or something like that. It's got to give you some perspective and some interesting perspective. It also has to have some unique challenges in terms of diving back into context every time. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. You might be biased in terms of, um, the things that might be out there when you're just focusing on a, a, a few apps or a single project. So working on an agency has this dynamism and also the, the, um, the opportunity to learn and uh, try different things because we need to adapt our strategy to different scenarios for each client, right? So, and that's how, how we made um, this LinkedIn post, basically. And uh, I bet you it also helps a little bit less with falling in love with a certain creative or falling in love with a certain messaging because you don't ha you don't you don't work directly for the company for the brand for the app you can you can say hey it's not working go walk away and change it Pablo this has been a lot of fun I want to thank you for taking the time to spend with me I know it's your evening you're in Spain I believe I know you're a remote worker but your company's in Spain I think you are are you in Spain that's correct yes it, it's not a late it's 5 p.m here <laughs> and um, it's summertime so it's still daylight excellent excellent well thank you so much thanks to you for having me I really enjoyed um, the interview so thanks a lot John you're welcome